Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Uh, we're going to try and uh, solve a few past paper questions right now. Uh, starting, I'm going to start off, I'm going to uh, just quickly try and solve as many possible past paper questions as as possible, TK. Uh, so starting with the first one, the, this one, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a March 20 question paper 4-2. And it's going to middle some start, Karo. And let me just share this in a couple of places, one second. So you know this one. Uh, starting with this one, uh, born neighbor cycle. Uh, so so you, you, a born neighbor cycle is constructed already and you're supposed to label enthalpy change four and six. Uh, so we're gonna try and do that quickly. Okay, in the enthalpy changes from uh, figure out kind of four, and, uh, four and six. So when is four? Four is this one. So what's happening, what's happening in four? Uh, look carefully, uh, this is your starting point and this is your product. Uh, so let's see what happens over here. You can see that F gains electrons over here. Nothing happens to Al3+. Plus. Uh, but what happens is that fluorine will gain electrons. So that's the electron affinity of fluorine. And that's multiplied by three because, because they're three fluorines and they're gaining three electrons. Uskebad, he's talking about enthalpy change six. Enthalpy change six is the one that's over here. So what's happening to what's happening here? Okay, you up start karo, okay, This is the starting point, and this is where you end up. So that's your enthalpy of formation. QK elements uh, in the standard state are forming one mole of compound. So that's that's delta HF or enthalpy change of formation of AlF3 solid. As uh, Uskebad, Use the data, in the data uh, in the table and the data from the data booklet to calculate the lattice energy of ALF3. Uh, so everything is pretty much given. Uh, what you just have to do is you have to add, add up all these values. So one path is basically equal to the other path. Uh, you're going to use Hess law. So you can start, uh, you, let's say this is your starting point, And this is where you want to end up. So that's one path. What's the other path? Other path is that you start from here and you start from the other side. So that's, that's your other path. Okay, your ending point should be the same. So uh, values are equal. Karo. What's, the, what's the enthalpy of formation given over here? Uh, DV is not DV. DV. It's minus 1,5. It's minus 1,5,0,4. So one of the paths, this one, is minus 1,5. 0, 04 and what about the rest the rest is k uh, delta h1 what is happening in delta h1 that's enthalpy change of atomization of aluminium solid so gas or so that's given over here that's plus 326 so equal to the other part so i'm 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 summing up all the values from the other part you do sir arrow bana uh then you have delta h2 which is what's happening in delta h2 uh you're breaking the fluorine fluorine bond. Is that energy given over here? Uh, that's not given over here. So you would have to open the data booklet ke, uh, somewhere in the data booklet. Okay, this is the syllabus. Ke end pe, there must be the data booklet or pe, you will have your bond energies. So is me ja ke dekho ke, uh, fluorine and fluorine 
that's is that even there or not theek hai that's given over there that's 158 to so going back uh, this one theek hai that's 158 pe jao aur ye wala jo path hai 1.5 f2 and that's turning into 3f so that's uh, that's 158 you're breaking uh, and how many bonds are you breaking you're breaking 1.5 bonds so that's 1.5 times 158 think you have to be very careful with the moles uh uske baad there is delta hd and you are ionizing aluminum aluminum loses three electrons in this path starting at this point you're reaching that part over there that's a al3 plus so that's delta h3 and aluminum loses three electrons uski value kahan di hui it's uh, it is given over here even if it wasn't given it's given in the data booklet that's 5137 to So I'm going to add five one three seven on the right side. Take my other path, and then you have to reach here, and then you have electron affinity of fluorine into three. So that's delta H four. So electron affinity of fluorine times three. Where is that? Uh, that's given fluorine turning into fluorine minus one. That's minus three twenty eight. So it's going to be minus three twenty eight times three because you've got three fluorines trying to gain electrons. and finally finally at the end you have delta h f this is your lattice energy so you that's your lattice energy and that lattice energy is uh, lattice energy is when gaseous ions they combine to form this ionic solid so so the last part is your lattice energy that's l dot e baki kaam asaan hai isko bas solve karna hai theek hai and you'll get your answer well can let me just open the marking scheme instead of doing all the calculations we can simply constant 9701 just one second quickly m20 ms underscore 42 ठीक है इसको सॉल्व करना एंड यू विल फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ द लैटिस एनर्जी लेट्स अ क्विकली हैव अ लुक के व्हाट इज द वैल्यू दैट वी आर गेटिंग ठीक है यहां पे लैटिस एनर्जी ठीक है so 1.1 it's the same expression 1.5 into 158 and 3 into minus 328 everything is the same uh, so you're getting pretty much the same answer or we'll calculate it you'll get minus 622 6220 uh, be very careful with your calculations acha agle pe aa jate hain we're done with this uh, the next one is scandium fluoride is an ionic compound use data from the data booklet to suggest how the lattice energy of alf3 compares with the lattice energy of scf3 so so the thing is what makes a strong lattice uh, if it's a strong lattice it's going to have a higher lattice energy it's going to be it's going to be forming strong bonds so what does lattice energy depend on it depends on two things it depends basically on charge density which which is that it's directly proportional to the charge like if you have if you have greater charge than your then your uh, lattice is going to be strong and it's inversely proportional to the ionic radius So if you have a bigger ion, your lattice would be weaker because the ions would be very far away from each other, and they're not going to attract each other very strongly. As a so lattice energy depends on the, these two things. Now, when you're comparing AlF3 with SCF3, scandium. Now both of them they have a charge of three plus, and fluorine has a charge of one minus. Scandium is three plus, and fluorine is one minus. So charge is not. is not really a concern over here charge is not a factor because it's the same it's the same charge the ionic radius is going to be a factor so how do you figure out which one is bigger aluminum or scandium again open the data booklet yahan pe kahin na kahin it's given uh probably after this wait wait a second somewhere they have probably before this tickets need not here this is ionization energies maybe before 
ये तुम स्टार्ट भी आके अच्छा समय ओवर है the ionic radiuses are coated just one second let me quickly have a look ye electrochemistry ke tables hai uske baad ha yahan pe theek hai so your uh, atomic radius and your ionic radiuses are coated over here and you can you just have a look uh, find aluminum to so aluminum 3 plus that's point 050 whatever the unit is that's nanometers and you've got uh, you've got scandium somewhere find scandium transition metals mein hoga group 14 group 17 first row d block so that's the so scandium must be somewhere over here that's 0.0, 0.081 so one of them is 0.081 and the other one jo dusra hai na that's uh, aluminum mere khayal se chota this is 0.081 and aluminum 3 plus is 0.050 so aluminum is smaller तो आप ये दोनों वैल्यूज ना यहाँ पे कोट करोगे आप बताओगे कि जी एल्यूमिनियम जो है ना दैट्स इट हैज डायरेक्ट रेडियस ऑफ पॉइंट जीरो फाइव जीरो नैनोमीटर्स एंड यू गुड कोट स्कैनियम थ्री प्लस यू गुड स्टेट कि वो साइज में बड़ा है दैट्स पॉइंट जीरो वॉट एवर जो भी साइज था उसका क्या था फिर की रह गया स्कैनियम दैट्स पॉइंट जीरो एट वन ठीक है सो इट्स पॉइंट जीरो एट वन nanometers and ab agar ye dono cheeze aapke paas aa gayi hain acha theek hai fir aap batao ke ki this is a smaller ionic radius so it's going to make a stronger lattice it and you're going to mention uh you're going to mention charge density uh so you have a smaller ionic radius and uh, you it's going to have a stronger lattice and it's going to be more exothermic i said then the next one So next one is, uh, it's given that ALF3 is in is sparingly soluble in water. The concentration of the saturated solution at 298 kelvins is given as 6.5 times 10 to the power minus 2. And you're being asked write the expression for the solubility product KSP of ALF3. So uh, what's the solubility product? It's when you have a saturated solution and it's it, it's in equilibrium with its with its uh, aqueous ions. Uh, so the solid substance is in equilibrium with its With its aqueous ions, which are in this case three F minus one, so what's going to be your KSP expression? It's going to be L three plus concentration into F minus one concentration, and F minus one concentration is going to be cubed because there are three of them in the equation. So we can calculate the numerical value of KSP L F three. Ab solubility is given. That's six point five times times ten power minus two. That means this much ALF three is dissolving. So you're going to use ratio six point five times ten power minus minus two. So AL three plus how much? That's one ratio one. Like one ALF three dissolves, it forms one AL three plus. So its the concentration of the mole per dm cube that would be exactly exactly the same. So that would be six point five times ten power minus two. Mole per dm cube. So F minus one क्या होगा? F minus one would be three times that much amount. क्योंकि one Al three plus ion is produced, then F minus one ions are going to be produced in three times that quantity. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be six point five times ten to the minus two, and it's going to be multiplied by three mole per dm cube. And what you're going to do is कि अगला काम है कि के एस पी के एक्सप्रेशन में ये वैल्यूज पुट कर दो सो के एस पी एक्सप्रेशन इज गोइंग टू बी इज गोइंग टू बी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एल थ्री प्लस थ्री टाइम्स द एफ माइनस वन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन विच इज सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स टेन पर माइनस थ्री इंटू थ्री एंड इट्स ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी क्यूब ठीक है इसको आप सॉल्व करोगे और बस हम मार्किंग स्कीम से देख लेते हैं कि क्या आंसर आता है 
Uh, this is the expression that you're getting, 3 times 6.5, and it comes out to be 4.8 times 10 power minus 4. And the unit, you have to be careful with the unit. So it's uh, it's concentration times concentration cubed. The concentration to the power of 4, over there. so it's going to be more 4, and dm would become minus 12. As a next one, uh, compound F has been found in small quantities in some cereals and dried fruit. Give the name of the functional groups uh, labeled A and B. So this one is an amide. Whereas this one is, is an ester. So you've got an amide and you have an ester functional group. State the number of chiral carbon atoms in one molecule of F. Uh, so what's chiral? Chiral is when you have a carbon atom that's bonded to four different groups and it forms two non-superimposable mirror images. So find out chiral carbon atoms. Uh, one of them is going to be, uh, now remember benzene, all the carbon atoms in benzene, they have a pi electron cloud and they're not going to form chiral carbon atoms because they're not making four bonds. Uh, so benzene is out of the question. This benzene is also out of the question. Uh, so this carbon over here, uh, has two hydrogens, so that's definitely not chiral. This carbon is chiral, the one that I've circled, that's that's chiral, because it's bonded to all three sides are different, and on the fourth side, there's going to be a hydrogen, so let's assume that that dash is a hydrogen. Uh, double bonded carbon atoms are not chiral. This is CH2, so this one will have two hydrogens. This one will have three hydrogens, so that's not chiral. Uh, then you have a benzene, uh, and then you have, I think, this carbon. That's the one, because this is CH3, so that's not going to be chiral. This is CH2. Uh, this one will have one hydrogen with it. So this one over here is chiral. So you've got, you've got two chiral carbon atoms over here. So the answer is to state the number of chiral carbon atoms, two of them. F can be hydrolyzed by heating with an excess of hydrochloric acid as shown. Three products are formed. So uh, now he's hydrolyzing it with an acid. Remember, it's, it's acidic hydrolysis that is taking place. So if you hydrolyze it using an acid, the ester would break. And if the ester breaks, uh, the top part would turn into an alcohol. So it's going to be one dash and it would turn into OH. And the amide would also break. There's an amide, so that would also break. Now the focus is on, they've already drawn the bigger molecule. Uh, it's this one. They've already drawn this part, which is going to be this molecule over here. So there's another ester that's going to break as well. So the, you can clearly see that has been broken. Uh, it's turned into a carboxylic acid and there's an OH. So this one turns into an alcohol and the other one turns into a carboxylic acid. They've already done that part. This one turns into a carboxylic acid. So they've done that part as well. So you're only left with, you just have to draw this molecule now. It's this molecule that needs to be drawn. So it's a, it's a benzene. It's, it's, it's a, Benzene, draw a benzene with the delocalized electron cloud, and there's this bond, then this bond, then you have a double bond O. The top double bond O turns into a carboxylic acid, and then you have NH, and that NH would become an NH2. But since amides are basic, and the solution is acidic, it would turn into NH3 plus one, because the lone pair on N is going to accept an acid because remember this is acidic hydrolysis. So they were using HCl. Uh, I mean, they've already shown that. They're using HCl to hydrolyze it. Draw the structures of the other products of the reaction in the boxes so we have done that. Uh, then you have Cl2 and FeCl3 reacting and state the role of FeCl3 in this setup, uh, in this step. So that's, that's a catalyst. And it's a catalyst in electrophilic substitution 
of benzene. So that's that's your catalyst. Uh, and you can see the CL. What it does is, and let me just for quick revision, you have a CL molecule coming in. Uh, because of the electron cloud uh, over here in the benzene electron cloud, the electrons over here are going to get repelled. And the CL would get a partial negative charge, the CL would get a partial positive charge, and this positive CL would be attracted to the benzene electron cloud, but it's not. Because the polarizing, this positive charge is not very high, it's not very large. Uh, so you need a catalyst. What the catalyst does from the other side is that it polarizes the FeCl3 molecule further. So the Cl2 molecule further. And it head, helps to attract the electrons of the Cl negative, tries to pull it off. So that Cl becomes positive and goes and bonds with the, with the benzene pi electron cloud. So this is what's happening in electrophilic substitution. Let's just skip bad, uh, just a quick second. This is the paper we are doing. He gets March 20, paper 42. I say anyways, uh, February, March 20, paper 42. Now coming back to this, use the data booklet to suggest two reasons why the chlorine atom in compound eight substitutes into the ring at the position shown instead of other positions in the ring. Uh, so the position shown, why is it substituting at this particular position? So you've got an alcohol group. Now an alcohol group, as a first thing, look at the alcohol group. So the first thing is, uh, not an alcohol, it's a phenol group. Uh, so you've got an OH. What does an OH do? What it does is phenols are, they have an electron donating effect. What, what that means is they're gonna push their electrons, their lone pairs, and oxen has a couple of lone pairs. So the electrons on oxen are going to overlap with benzene's pi electron cloud and the electron density on the two, four and six positions would increase, which is why this positive CL is going to be attracted to this particular position to start with. So that's one, and that's given in the data booklet. You don't, you don't have to remember this. Uh, there's a page in the data booklet where this is already given that which ones are two, four, six directing. So they've already done that for you. You have got OH and that's a two, four position directing group. And the other one is a carboxylic acid. So you, you have a carboxylic acid over here and that's your three position directing group. What a carboxylic acid would do is that a carboxylic acid has an electron withdrawing effect. What that does is K because of the oxygen, the electronegative oxygens, uh, so the carboxylic acid has this tendency to withdraw electrons. So it's going to withdraw electrons at the two, four positions. And this carboxylic acid, sorry, uh, on the neighboring positions, two and six. And it's going to withdraw electrons as well because there's another carboxylic acid. So the electron density over here would be lesser as well. So the only position left is this one, which is why the Cl is going to be attracted over here, let's see how the mark scheme is. How is that uh, described just to be quick? Uh, OH directs to two, four position, that's one mark. And COH directs to three position. So, which is why only, I mean, that's what the five is already occupied. So they just, you just had to tell which position they were directing the groups to, which is why the electrophile is going to be directed to this position. As I think next one, uh, this one is about, uh, looks like a most uh, difficult question. Uh, this one is about, about compound J and you probably have to figure out what compound J was, J is. I said, it's me, you've got uh, part of the mass spectrum of J is shown and M and plus one peaks are labeled along with the relative uh, intensities. What do you get? But by just looking at the mm plus one ratio, you can figure out the number of carbon atoms. And that's a, there's a simple formula for that, which is n is equal to 100 over 1.1 into the m plus one height divided by the divided by the m height. And you do that, uh, so it's 100 over 1.1. The m plus one height is given as 14.4. So that's, and the m height is given as 100. I think. So 
if you do this, if you solve this, it's probably going to come out to be 14, I think. Uh, we can just have a quick look at the, oh, just a second, where's the magazine? It's 100, I don't have a calculator, 100 over, okay, magazine comes out, okay, that's, we have it over here. I think it's the right one. Uh, where's, where's the question? Which question is this? Question number four. So number of carbon atoms. Question number four. Uh, that's coming out to be, you're getting the same formula, 14.4 divided by 100 and into 100 over 1.1, that's giving you 13.1. So you're getting 13.1 and your number of carbon atoms is going to be approximately, it's going to be approximately 13. Pay care, the mass spectrum has a peak at 205. Suggests the identity of the fragment lost from J to form this peak. So 205 Kyopana, you're getting a peak. And we can a case formula now. For this one. So if you, what you have to do is, what you simply have to do is, because no other information is provided, and that's that's and that that is probably the last part of the question. After that, the question pretty pretty much ends. Uh, now, if you look at this question, no other information is given. What only is given is you know the number of carbon atoms. So that's that's a total of thirteen carbon atoms. So after this, for trial and error, you've got you've got a bunch of uh, you don't know, you know the number of carbon atoms now. Okay, what you don't know is the number of hydrogens and the number of oxygens. Okay, no other information is probably given. The way you it, suggest the identity of the fragment lost from J. So you're looking for the fragment that has lost that is lost from J. Now, if you look carefully, the M peak is at 250. I think it's it's at 250. You can zoom in. It's probably at 250. So uh, I said, okay, 250. Uh, suggest the identity of the fragment lost from J to form this peak. So 250 say is saying that there's a fragment which has a mass of 205. So what is the fragment that's lost? That's 45, right? And you can be, now you have to figure out what 45 is. That's probably three carbon atoms. Right and 45 kind so that's 36, and you've got nine hydrogens. Can we have nine hydrogens with this? It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eighty or eight. He gave not getting nine hydrogens, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it as two carbon atoms, right? And we can add so two carbon atoms is 24, and we can add an oxygen. He gave I add an oxygen. How much I have to make it 45 somehow. Uh, so is that 45? You just have to look uh, carbon. That's 24 plus 16. That's 40. 40 plus still not. Yeah, still not 45. How do I make it? How do I make it 45? Uh, we can have OH instead. So does that make it 45? It's still doesn't it's for two carbon atoms, that's 24. Uh, and you have 17, that's 40, wait a second. So 24 plus 16, that's 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Okay, this is the fragment. So you, you just have to give the formula of the fragment, that's going to be CH3, or you can say C2. H is five and is one oxygen. So that's, that's the fragment that has broken off to form a peak at 205. So that's what's happening. As a next one, next question. You've got uh, you've got gallic acid. It's a naturally occurring aromatic molecule. Gallic acid contains the carboxylic acid, uh, uh, the carboxylic acid and phenol functional groups. Stay to explain the relative acidities of these two functional groups. So you've got a phenol, you've got a carboxylic acid. Uh, remember carboxylic acids are more acidic 
why are they more acidic? Because when a carboxylic acid ionizes, uh, what happens is, let's say the H breaks off and it has ionized. So what you're going to write is that the negative charge density over here is lesser. Why is it lesser? Because there's a neighboring oxygen that pulls the electron density away from the oxygen at the bottom. So the electron density over here decreases, which is why it no longer attracts H plus one, which is why it's easier for it to dissociate or ionize. And in phenol, the electron withdrawing effect is slightly lesser. For example, over here, uh, if the H breaks off, the oxygen gets a negative charge. And there's only just slight overlap with the benzene electron cloud, not that much. So the electron withdrawing effect of benzene or the pi electron cloud or the mixing of the lone pairs or overlapping of the lone pairs with benzene's pi electron cloud is not that much. So instead of writing, I'm just going to go over the KCOH uh, there. You have to write that the carboxylic ion, I mean, they just, they just gave it for two marks. They use the Yebatane K. The serial bond O has an electron withdrawing effect, or the oxygen serial bond O withdraws electrons, which makes which reduces the charge density on the COO minus one ion. Or you have a K uh serial bond O Qs about the key electron electronegative oxygen. And the other one is. Uh, uh, they hadn't mentioned about phenol. Explain. So they didn't give any marks for phenol for describing phenol. Uh, bond Oka mentioned Huawei, Cetal bond O is mentioned, carboxylate ion. Uh, so they just talked about carboxylate ion being the stronger acid. You could have talked about the other one as well, and that would have made the same sense. As the next one is, you've got a buffer solution was prepared by dissolving 2.04 grams of gallic acid in 250 cmq of a solution containing 0.06 mole per dmq of gallate ions. So you've got you've got a buffer solution. Define the term buffer solution. So it's a solution that resists a change in pH when you have a small amount of acid or alkali that's added to it. And you're being asked. You calculate the pH of the buffer solution. Now, the pH of the buffer solution is that you, it has an expression, it's a K, which is conjugate base concentration into H plus one concentration divided by the acid concentration. Now, in that, in this case, we've got the K value. So the K value is already with us. It's, uh, I'm gonna do the working here, it's 3.89 times I think 10 power minus uh, K5. And you've got uh, conjugate base concentration. Remember, this is the conjugate base. TK, you basically equilibrium my products divided by reactors, that's K. TK, so this is products, this is the conjugate base. So Kya concentration, the EVS key, uh, is already given the concentration of gallate ion, that's 0 0.06 mole per DMQ, so that's 0.06. We don't know what H plus one concentration is. Or divide by a gallic acid concentration is key. So you're given 2.04 grams of gallic acid in 250 CMQ of whiskey extra step where you have to calculate the concentration. So first thing is find the moles. Moles is mass divided by MR. So it's gonna be 2.04. Uh, they probably did not give you the MR. So, so you can find the MR. It's uh, seven carbons, six hydrogens, Five oxygens. Okay, so uh, that would be your moles. Uh, Twelve into seven plus the six hydrogens plus uh, sixteen into five. Right. So that's that's your moles. Concentration. Kisan the Concentration is moles divided by volume. So the volume is given. That's two fifty cm cube. It's going to be 0.25 dm cube. So concentration nikalo gallic acid ki and put that concentration in the expression over here. So I was marking scheme to the uh where did he find the carbonic concentration? It's 0.012 as a moles. 
So the MR came out to be 170 and it came out to be 0.012 moles and then 0.012 moles divided by 0.25 dm cube. So the expression is 0.012 moles divided by 0.25 dm cube. That's the concentration of gallic acid. Or solve find the concentration of H plus one. Once you find the concentration of H plus one, what is pH pH is? Minus log of H plus one concentration, and you can then go on to find that. You can minus log base 10 connect. You can you get 4.5. I said next is okay. Write two equations to show how solutions containing gallic acid and gallatines act as buffer. So why is it acting as a buffer? Would you put the equation like you that was this one? Okay, there was gallic acid, it would Ionize, uh, lose one of the H to form O5 minus one ion and the H plus one is lost. So why does it act as a buffer? The reason it acts as a buffer is, if you get up H plus one concentration increase, you'll add an acid, the equilibrium shifts backwards and tries to re reduce it. So one equation that you're gonna write is, if acid is added, this equation ko ulta karke likh lo. So it's going to be H plus one that combines with C seven H five O five minus one, and it ends up forming C seven H six O five. ठीक है ये जो ऊपर उसने equation खुद ही दी हुई थी. If you add H plus one, equilibrium shifts backwards. That's it. And if a base is added. So what does a base do? Base H plus one key concentration would decrease karta. Which is why if it decreases, the equilibrium shifts forward. This is secondary loading. 